Hey baby, this is Rob. Welcome to the back of the classroom. Today we're discussing chapter two in the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. So this chapter talked about not putting too much trust in your friends and learn how to use your enemies. So I've had a conference, we had a podcast before about friends, right? And you also heard the terminology. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. So reading this chapter made me think of that. And then it made me question what type of friends can't you use? What type of friends you have to keep your enemies closer because your friends aren't as, they're not secure enough or they won't hold you down or they won't be there for you the way you need them to. And in reading the chapter, it talked about how your friends could be envious. Your friends are susceptible to betraying you. And then you got to wonder, those characteristics, are they really your friends? And then we got to go into, you got to question, who are your friends, right? Do they have your best interest at heart? Do they want you to succeed regardless of the situation they're in, right? So what are your friends like? Are your friends yes men? Do your friends tell you the truth regardless if it's in your favor or not, right? If you mess up, do your friends call you out on it? If you make a mistake, do your friends call you out on it? Or they stand by your side whether you're right or wrong? Or let's just say wrong. If Do your friends stand by your side even when you're wrong and don't correct you? Tell you, oh, girl, don't do that. That's not cool. Or your homie, that wasn't a good idea. You, you should go apologize. Or, you know, back in the day where you were like, look, you got to go home. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to take care of your kids. Like me personally, I can't. If I find out. You don't take care of your kids. I can't be friends with you. I can't be close to you because I find that to be a verbal, terrible quality in a person. Your family, your child's your flesh and blood. Your That child did not ask to be here. That child has no access, no means, no resources, no ability to take care of themselves because they're not the, they're not in the, uh, how would you say... They're not in a proper mindset, not to mention based on where you live, you might not even have the opportunity. They're not going to let you get a job. And even though some things are simple, like working the fries at McDonald's, you hit a button, you put the fries in, you can follow that, right? You can teach your kids how to cook at home and they can work the fry machine, right? I've taught kids as young as 10 how to make eggs or flip burgers or make pancakes. So you can teach things. But yet in the working world, they're not allowed to work and earn a living, which means they do not have the means to take care of themselves. So that's your job to be there. You brought them into this world. Now, it's different when you sign your rights over, right? Listen, you wanted to have a kid. I didn't want to have a kid. You chose to do this. So let me sign my rights over and you go ahead and do what you're going to do. Or even if it was she wanted the kid and you didn't want one, but you just helped her out in the situation, cool. No problem. That's what she wanted. That's what she asked for. You gave her what she wanted, right? Who are you to argue? But when you know the type of people you are around and you're surrounding yourself with, I think those people would be more better suited to be around you than enemies. Or the supposed friends that don't tell you the truth or... The, uh, how would you say, people who just give you the comfortable lie, people who won't call you out, people who won't correct you, people who are happy watching you go through what you go through, but not intervening because they'll go, it's none of my business, but yet, if something was to happen to you, then they're all in, they're ready to jump in and do everything it takes. But if one situation isn't your business, how did you deem the next one your business, right? If we're going to be, if we're going to hold people accountable to the things that they say and do then technically it's your business if you witness it, right? Most people who witness a crime, it don't have to be a crime against them. They'll call the police and say, oh my God, I witnessed this, 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 and this. Because they are choosing to see something that's being done wrong and want to be 
a means of correcting it. They say bad things happen when good people do nothing. So if you're seeing something bad happen, to sit there and be a, in a bystander or not pay attention to it or remove yourself from the situation, you're allowing bad things to continue. So do your friends allow you to do bad things and not call you on it? Do your friends benefit from you and they won't go against you because they feel they would fall out of favor and lose the benefits? You see that in, not to call any specific name, but you see that in the music industry. I listen to music, I'm like, how did this make the radio? How, who, what is this? And of course, somebody allowed their friend to get in the studio when they hyped them up. You get enough publicity or you get enough people behind you and people want to hear it just because they want to see what you're talking about, it'll get out there. I mean, and it's not to necessarily say it's good quality music. There was this one dude sounded terrible, but it was funny and everybody was laughing at it. And I think it started on social media and then all of a sudden he's on Apple Music. People are buying it. And it might not be because he's making good music. People might just be buying it just to laugh at it, but you're still putting money in his pocket. So... Do people benefit from you in fear telling you the truth or just want to keep getting those favors, right? Do your friends find value in your friendship, regardless of whatever it is, over everything? Oh, nah, that's my people, you know, so so we're just not going to call them out on what they do. They value y'all friendship so much that they'll never tell you what you're doing is wrong. Or you might want to change something because that's not how it should be. It's just, eh, whatever. Like, if you have those type of friends, then I totally get it. Yeah. Go ahead and keep your enemies even closer because at least you know who your enemies are. You know what they stand for. You know what they didn't like about you. And when we say enemies, we see people who are against you. They don't see or like what it is that you did. And they feel like a change needs to be made. If... Somebody knocked over an old lady and tried to take her purse and I went to stop it. I am that person's enemy. But that person knows what I stand for. That person will know, yeah, you, you called the cops when I knocked that, when that old lady tried to take her purse. Yeah, because you weren't supposed to be doing that. All right. You know, I respect that because, you know, you're using... So he made an enemy a friend because when I called him out and it corrected something he was doing that wasn't right, I was an enemy. But because he knows the type of principles and what I stand on... He's willing to set that aside to befriend me in order to stand together and unite it. Because a lot of times, an enemy is just somebody who don't see your way or they don't agree with it. And they want something or an opportunity or something that you have that they want. But if you can step that, put that to the side and go, you know what, it really ain't that deep. Right? You didn't take a life from me that was valuable or, you know, you didn't do great harm to a loved one of mine, I might be able to let it go and go, you know what? We could work together and we could do something. But I don't hold too many things personal anyway, so people could do whatever they want to do. But just reading it and understand the concept that your friends is envious and your friends will betray you, then to me that says you have a poor quality of friends, right? Your friends are only around you. The people you call friends are people who are around you when you're having good times and the best of times and when things is rough. They disappear, they go elsewhere until you back on top again and they back partying with you in the club, right? So there was a, I listened to a lot of hip hop and one artist was saying how he won't eat with anyone he didn't struggle with. Makes sense, right? Because obviously if I'm in struggle with you, I can eat with you. So if I'm going through the worst of times with you, I can celebrate the best of times with you. Those people I could consider friends. Those are the people that I can go, okay, you're a stand-up guy. You have morals and principles. I know you're about your own thing and you're doing the things you got to do. I can respect that. Versus the people who are just around when I'm celebrating. Right? <clears throat> I'm not going to ask anybody to throw a party for me. If you throw a party for me, yeah, I'm happy to show up and have a good time. Because this is something you're doing for me. Now, if I tell you to throw a party and I start throwing out flyers and I'm saying open bar, then naturally everybody who comes around is coming for the festivities, not necessarily to celebrate me. Now, of course, the larger the function is everyone's having a good time. It feels successful, but how many people in that crowd know your name? How many people are willing to toast to you and mean it and sincerely clap and applaud you and 
Be happy that you're moving on to better places. How often do you get that? So what are your friends? Who are your friends? What do they stand on? And if you gave them the opportunity, let's say you started a business, again, you know what your enemies stand on, what they about, what they feel about you. What are your friends? Are they there just for the benefit? So you give them the position. Did they earn it? Do they qualify for it? Or did they just get it because they're friends? It's a handout. You're not bettering them. You're, you're, how would you call it? You're spoiling them. It's like society today. They just expect to get it just to get it. Just because they're them. It doesn't work. Qualify for it. Or at least be willing to put in the work and get training. And show me your motiva- motivation. Show me your qualification. Show me your work ethic. Show me you're willing to learn something and, and improve and be better at it. So you being in this position helps the both of us. And it's not just me putting you there because we're cool. Right? It can't be just that. Because then, yeah, at the end of the day, if the opportunity arises for them to do something different and take me out so they can have it, then I definitely can see that. Because at the end of the day, your loyalty wasn't based on who I am. It was based on what you was able to get from me. So be careful about the people you have around you. If if it's only about the benefits they get from you, then yeah, most definitely. They're going to take you out just to get what you have and then some. And then when it doesn't work out for them, you're, you're more heartbroken and feeling way about it because somebody you considered a friend did what they did. But you chose bad or you didn't look deep enough or you gave the wrong people opportunities because you felt those attachments was more important than the qualifications, the morals, and the position itself and what it meant to hold that down and support you and help you get to where you're going. I understand you want to give people opportunities, but put them in a position to be better. Don't give people, you know, I say you give a man a fish, eats for a day, teach a man a fish, eats for a lifetime. Give him knowledge, give him understanding, see where he's at with things and allow him to choose his opportunities. He can be there for support and moral support, and you can he can see you and get motivated. But then I think there's a difference in people, too. I've never looked at anybody and hated they had what they had. I've seen people who look stronger than me, and I commend them for what they did, and I can appreciate the time and energy it took for them to get to where they're at because they was willing to do that. And that's just motivation to me because in my mind, I look at it like, that person can do it, I can do it. There's nothing I can't do. It's just about what I choose to focus on. But I also understand everybody's not like me. And then reading this chapter, it's just like, dang, like, I guess you have more people. And this book is pretty much basing its insights and examples back in the 1800s. So you figure this is 2021. If you're talking over, over 200 years ago, you still had these things going on. So if these things were happening, and then this is a different land. They're talking about French um, in the land in France, where the French uh, hierarchy was um, dominant, and these are the things that was going on. So naturally, my idea is, it don't matter where you are on the planet, people are people, and if you understand people, you will understand there are ways of getting around certain things, but it's based on the decisions you make, right? So if you made it this far, please read the book, hit me up, social media. Let's have the conversation. Let's figure it out. And Rel's Locker is still up and running to support this platform. Uh, You can send donations if you like, but I would much rather you guys, you know, go to the store, buy something. I got things ranging from mouse pads to hoodies and T-shirts. So whatever your price point is, there's something there. Um, If you take a picture and send it to me on my social media, That'll be dope. I will uh, post all those who want to be posted just for, you know, saying thank you. And I appreciate your patronage and your support to the platform. Please like, comment, share. And I will talk to you guys later.